This video is sponsored by ViewSonic. Let's find out which 21st century skills haven't found their way into your classroom just yet and how you can start teaching them. 21st century skills are what our students need to learn in order to thrive in a rapidly changing modern world. The first on our list is critical thinking. Critical thinking is the ability to analyze a situation, weigh out the different options, and then identify potential solutions. And critical thinking is not just something that students just do on their own. Often we ask students to read a book and then write an essay that shows that they have thought critically about reading the book, but we need to add support there in the middle to help them develop those critical thinking skills. One of the ways to do this is to use something called thinking routines. One of the thinking routines that I like to use at the beginning of a math lesson was that I would present a mathematical problem or a mathematical pattern to the students and then have them write down what they see, what they think, and what they wonder. It seems simple enough, but what this does is it forces careful observations, the C, the beginnings of interpreting those observations, the think, and the opportunity to develop questions in light of those observations, the wonder. It was great to see students begin to think critically about a math concept on their own before I did any explicit teaching about that concept. And you can do this in any class. You can have students do these close observations about a poem or about a political cartoon or about some scientific phenomena that's happening. One of the ways that I like to do it was up on the board having the words see, think, and wonder in three different columns, and then students could write what they see, think, and wonder on post-its and then put it in the appropriate column. Anytime that you can get the kids up and moving as they are thinking and engaging with the lesson, it's a win. There may be instances where it would make more sense for you to do a see, think, and wonder digitally on an app like Padlet. Particularly if you want to be able to save these observations and refer back to them later, which is especially useful for going back to the things that students wonder and see which of those questions were answered by the end of the lesson. And doing a digital version of this makes it more accessible to students who may be absent or just not physically present with you in the classroom. Harvard's Project Zero has documented lots of different thinking routines you can use in the classroom, and I will link to their resources so you can explore more types of thinking routines for different contexts. Creativity. When you hear creativity, you may just conjure up images of students doing art projects, but creativity is so much more than that. Teaching creativity means that you are giving your students an opportunity to show what they have learned by creating something new, like a video or a digital book or a podcast, instead of always reverting to a multiple choice or standard written assignment. Creativity is the ability to solve problems that do not have obvious solutions. It often takes a level of creative thinking to be able to make connections between things that other people are not making. It took a creative mind to think, what happens if I take pickles and I add peanut butter to it? This is truly the first time I'm trying this. It wouldn't be my go-to snack, but it's not terrible. Some people think that having students do creative activities is not that rigorous. But when you're having students take the things that they have learned and then transform them into something different, there's a lot of higher order thinking going on and it requires a deeper understanding of that content in order to transform it into something different. Take creating this video for example. Having to take the things that I've learned about 21st century skills and turn it into video forced me to go learn even more about those 21st century skills to make sure that what I was saying was true and right and correct. And then I had to think through how exactly do I want to articulate this in a way that it is clear, in a way that it is helpful to the person that's watching this, and in a way that's interesting and engaging for the viewer. That is a ton of problem solving that happens in the act of taking something that I've learned and transforming it into a video in this case. So if you wanna try something simple, to give your students an opportunity to show what they have learned by creating something, have them make a whiteboard video where they show what they know. In math class, you can have them work out a problem on a digital whiteboard using sketches and visuals and explaining their thinking and their process along the way. In more languages, you can have your students draw a scene that is gonna incorporate a majority of the vocabulary that they are learning, and then they have to describe the scene that they have drawn. 
In history class, you can have students take a historical event and then sketch out a story with key characters and dialogue that show that student's understanding of that event. Our digital whiteboard of choice is an app called Whiteboard by My Viewboard, since it's super versatile and even has a built-in screen recorder right in the app. And it's actually the app that I have been using for all of the whiteboard sketches that you are seeing in this video. I've linked to a video in the description where I walk you through all the different things that you and your students can do with Whiteboard. Collaboration. Solving the world's toughest problems is going to require people to work together, not only in person, but also in digital environments as well. When working with others, we need to recognize that we bring certain strengths to the table and the other people that we are collaborating with also bring different skill sets. And together, we can do so much more than if we were trying to solve these problems alone. But working together is hard. Even when Sam and I are collaborating on a project, he'll have this idea that that he thinks is gold and I'm like, I don't like that idea at all. Or I've got this plan that's gonna be a game changer for us. But he's like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Thankfully, throughout our lives, we've both learned tools and strategies that help us collaborate and our students need the opportunity to learn those tools and strategies for collaboration as well. Often when you put students together to begin collaborating, students begin to argue. One student's doing all of the work, one student's doing none of the work. And these problems don't disappear when you move over to a digital space like a Google Doc. Someone's work is getting deleted or unhelpful comments are being left and it can be a mess. Quick side note, in Google Docs, if you would like to see who edited what part of a document, you can highlight it, right click and show editors, just in case you're trying to find out who may be causing all of the Google Docs mayhem. One small thing that you can do to help students begin to collaborate a little bit more more effectively, whether it is physical or digital collaboration, is giving them language that fosters collaboration. I agree with this person because. I disagree with this person because. I'm wondering such and such. What if we tried to fill in the blank? Can you explain what you mean by that? You can have these up on the wall. I know Sam had something similar in his classroom where there were these cards that were laminated and at the tables that students could use. And this is not gonna solve all of your collaboration problems, but it is a small step in helping students collaborate more effectively. And it's fairly closely tied to our next skill, communication. Communication is the ability to have your ideas understood in a variety of mediums. Developing communication skills go beyond students raising their hand and sharing their answer out loud or writing their thoughts in an essay. I like this tweet by entrepreneur Ali Abdal where he says, I really believe talking to a camera is one of the most important skills you can develop in the modern world. It gives you a competitive edge and opens the door to countless opportunities. So let's take that as an example, giving students the opportunity to communicate, to show what they have learned by speaking to a camera and making a video. You can't just tell a student to record a video to show what you have learned without telling them what goes into making an effective video. A few things to teach students when making a video. Students need to learn that to communicate well on camera, you have to look directly at the lens because looking at the lens is what simulates eye contact with the person watching the video. They need to learn that you often can't just wing it when you're making a video, particularly one where you're sharing what you have learned. But instead, you need to outline what you are going to say with bullet points or an actual word for word script in order to organize your thoughts. For me, way more time goes into writing the script than actually making the video because that's the process of taking these things that I want to say and then organizing them in a way that I can communicate on camera effectively. Students need to learn that talking to the camera is going to involve rehearsing and practice and multiple takes. I've been making YouTube videos since 2015 and I am still having to do retakes and re-say and I don't like how that came out and let me try it again until I'm happy with the way that I've communicated something. And students 
students need to learn how to concisely communicate on camera. There's this Mark Twain quote that says, sorry I wrote you such a long letter, I didn't have time to write a short one. And what that's saying is that it takes a lot more effort to consolidate your thinking, take out the redundancies, and strip everything down to the essential message that you're trying to communicate, whether that's a letter or a video that you're making. So give your students a time limit of one to three minutes, depending on the nature of the video, to teach them how to boil it down to the essential message and communicate more effectively on camera. The app formerly known as Flipgrid, it is now just Flip, if you didn't know about that name change, is a perfect tool for students creating video in the classroom because it's kind of built like a social media app and so it's a little bit more intuitive for the students making the videos and it also allows teachers to set time limits on the video submissions that students turn in. These four skills are sometimes referred to as the four C's. And teaching them to students often requires you as the teacher to develop your skills as well. So we've created a 21st century teacher quiz to help you identify which teacher skills you are already doing well in and which skills you can continue to develop in order to reach your learners. You can click right here or down in the link in the bio and it'll take you right on over to the quiz. We will see you over there.